Welcome to the Potter Blog site. It is Monday, January 23rd. We're in the midst of a proton storm. Uh, but that's not the subject of this video, but I'll digress for a moment. Uh, these are all uh, high energy protons from the Sun striking the uh, camera of the uh, SOHO Space Observatory. Uh, each one of these protons when it enters the atmosphere has a potential of hitting uh, cesium-133. Uh, it's a non-radioactive fallout component that's the decay product of xenon-133. It's uh, one of the more massive uh, fallout components that came out of Fukushima. When these protons hit that, and this is not even a, the worst of these proton storms, when the protons hit that cesium-133 it will spall it into a host of radioactive iodines. Uh, it's troubling in and of itself, but the, I thought the photo was interesting. But now on to the, the primary subject here. We have a, an alert for a three times uh, background radiation detected in the air in uh, Taos, New Mexico. This is again not a rain swipe of a paper towel. This is an airborne detection that occurred on January 18th in uh, Taos, Taos, New Mexico. Uh, reportedly the wind was still no rain, no snow. Lasted approximately uh, 20 minutes. Uh, the initial reports uh, stated that the jet stream flow was too far north to be a factor. Well, that turns out not to be the case. Uh, we actually went and looked at the jet stream maps. And here is the jet stream map. This uh, little red dot is uh, right about where Taos is. Uh, this image was taken at 1900 Zulu which is approximately 5 p.m. Uh, Taos time, about 49 minutes before, uh, uh, before the detection was made. Now, the detection actually, I believe, was initially started outside the house. And uh, once the individual made the detection, he moved inside the house, hooked up to the radiation network, and uh, started reporting the detection. Now, what's interesting about that is Taos is that uh, the elevation here was like 7,000 feet, and uh, readings continued for about 20 minutes indoor. Indoor, these jet stream maps here are from uh, 30,000 feet, and these are all high winds. Now, here's the detection. Let me zoom in on that. Get a little better reading here. And it'd be nice if we had uh, the full up data. But you can see here it's about 3x background, then a quick drop off. And there's a sawtooth pattern, which is interesting. Um, I would say that's a little unusual, but we'd have to see more data to see what's going on here. Basically, what we believe this to be is a uh, fallout uh, on the jet stream uh, from Fukushima related to an earthquake that happened in Fukushima approximately January 11th. Now, Here's the uh, animated jet stream map. Again, here we have uh, Taos, and this is at uh, 49 minutes before the detection. Now, what you'll see is, as we're right here, the six hours later, the jet stream will move slightly uh, further north, and it's actually outside Taos right there. Now, if you imagine here, if this being a uh, a river of water filled with silt. Uh, where the river slows down, where it goes from high speed to low speed, is where the silt falls out of the river and deposits itself. So anywhere, anytime we're along an edge here, especially if there's a, a, a ripple or a curve, there's a potential for this uh, fallout to actually fall out because of the stagnation. It's not a complete stagnation, but the slowing down of the airspeed allowing the fallout to drop not being carried in the river, if you will. And that's exactly what we believe he happened here in Taos. Now, it's unusual. This is the second such report of uh, such an incident occurring this month. Uh, there was an incident in uh, Caloundra, Australia, where there was an 8x background rating. Slightly different circumstances, but uh, in some sense similar. We'll see if it makes for an interesting trend. Now what I'm going to show you here next is how we track this back to uh, Fukushima. And here we have, uh, well, let's show you what happened here on Fukushima. 
and this is on reported on January 12th. I believe the actual earthquake happened on January 11th. It's a 5.8 earthquake, 60 kilometers from Fukushima plant, followed by multiple M4s. Uh, the actual data shows a 5.8, 3.8, 5.4, 4.4, and a 4.1. Uh, some of these are closer than others, but this, uh, the big one, the 5.8, was very close and it had an intensity of shaking of 4. I believe it was also a shallow quake. So we have an earthquake here, and I believe the day after this there was a report of a leakage of a radioactive fluid at one of the plants. Let's see if we can track this back to Fukushima. Here in the center of the map we have the North Pole. Down here on the bottom right is Taos. And then if we swing over here to the left, we have Fukushima. Now this map starts at uh, 0 Zulu January 12th. That's also the same as Greenwich uh, Mean Time. And we're going to let this run. And well, if you watch this area in here, you'll see how it develops and moves out uh, through and over uh, Taos. So let's start it here. And you can see it developing, moving out, connects, and then right in here. So this actually runs all the way through January 22nd. And I'm going to stop it here at the appropriate time on January 19th. Let's go back one. Okay, this is approximately 49 minutes before the detection was made in Taos. And you can see the jet stream here. A little bubble there, a little curve or bend in the river right over Taos. Now if we back it up, if you watch through here, you can see, especially if you follow these pressure lines, it tracks back. So I'm going to go backwards in time now. So we're on January 18th. And the key is to watch we're right in this region. So we move on back. And we're right here in this, this uh, low pressure front here. Helps keep an eye on it. Oops, went forward. Go back. And you see we're starting to be in here, which this is now January 15th. Now we're in here January 14th. So here we are January 13th. And you can see we're right in Fukushima. So this is just a rough eyeball estimate, but it gives the general time frame. Let's let it resume and go forward. And you can watch it. And I'll stop it once it hits uh, Taos. So there we go. They're on Taos again. So, this is very interesting. Again, this occurred in open air, inside a house, outside and inside the house. An adobe structure, 7,000 feet in the air. A jet stream here is approximately 30,000 feet. Uh, what's very troubling is, is, as large as this air mass is, yeah, I think anybody who got rained on during this time period may have got a pretty good hit. But uh, flying in an airplane during this time, not a good idea. Uh, jet engines act like uh, giant uh, centrifuges in essence and they spin all the high, weight, high atomic weight fallout into the uh, bleed air which brings it into the air conditioner of the, and the atmosphere inside the cabin. There are HEPA filters inside aircraft uh, it depends on the carrier and how often they're changed the HEPA filters don't block everything, uh, especially not uh, uh, radioactive gases like iodine and xenon. But uh, not a good time to be on an airplane traveling through this mess. It'll be interesting to see if we get further airborne detections where we're actually getting uh, higher levels of uh, radioactivity in the air. Uh, 3x in most places, in California at least, in other places is considered a hazmat incident. It's a troubling situation. It's important to be aware and uh, stay safe. Stay out of the rain.